Welcome to the video for Algebra, Chapter 6, Section 2. In this video, we're going to be solving linear systems by substitution. Uh, this starts on page 381. So we're going to be working some of the problems that you'll see in homework. Um, but just to keep in mind how this is different from Section 1, we're still solving linear systems. So we're solving multiple linear equations. Uh, we're looking for the solution for those linear equations. But we're going to be taking a different approach this time. This time it's by substitution. Okay? Before it was by graphing. So we would take we would take a linear equation or two linear equations, we would put them in slope intercept form and then we would graph them, right? And as you recall, when we have our graphs drawn, we would then look at the graph and identify the coordinate point that at which they intersected. And that coordinate point we would then check into the uh, equation to make sure that they were in fact, uh, that, that, that that point was in fact an equation for both lines. So this time, like I mentioned before, it's a different approach, it's by substitution. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, if I look at these two equations, so this equation for number three actually has it laid out pretty decent for me because uh, in two ways. Number one, it tells me the value of my x variable. Okay, the value of this x variable is 17 minus 4y, but it also tells me the value of my y variable, okay, which it says is x minus 2. So I can take either one of these equations and actually substitute them for each other in a, in a new equation. All right, so I'll go ahead and substitute the value of x, which is this, into this equation right here. So what do I mean by that? So this equation is y equals an x. So this is where my x would go. And then my minus 2. Right? Here, actually, let me change the color. So this is, this is that equation. This is the value of x. So now, instead of putting x minus 2 like I have here, I'm going to change x for the value of x, which is 17 minus 4y. Okay, see what I did there? Okay, so then my new equation ends up being y equals 17 minus 4y minus 2. So I can add my two like terms. 17 minus 2 is 15 minus 4y equals y. Okay, and I want to, oops, and I want to isolate my variable y, so I'm going to go ahead and add 4y to both sides. And that leaves me with 15 equals 5y. Okay, so I'm almost done. Now I know the value of the y variable, which is 3. So now that I know the, the, var the value of my y variable, okay, what I'm going to do with this value y equals 3 is I'm now going to replace I'm now going to replace y on this equation okay does that make sense so I use this equation over here and I found the value of y so now that I found this value I'm going to plug it into my new to this new equation here to find the value of x so that's x minus 17 minus 4 and my value for y is 3 so now it's 4 minus 3, right? So instead of having y, I have now 3. So then I can just solve. PEMDAS states that I should multiply first. So that's 17 minus 12 equals 5. Right? So that's my value for both of these equations. I have x. Sorry. Uh, my x is 5, and my y coordinate point is 3. So this is the uh, coordinate point that, uh, that is shared by these two equations. So again, uh, without having to graph these equations, I was able to find the coordinate point that they both have in common. Okay, let's do another one for more practice. Okay, so number 10. All right, so for number 10, I have uh, a couple of equations that are a little bit slightly more complicated than the previous. I'm going to have to do an extra step. Reason being is because um, as I look at these two equations, I don't have the value of any of the variables, so I'm going to have to solve for one of these variables. And it looks like this one might be the easiest one. 
So let's not, let's find the value of x here. Let me rewrite my equation. Okay. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides, right? And that leaves me with a new equation of x equals 8, because negative 1 plus 9 is 8. So now I have the value of x. So then I can now plug this value in to that variable, to this equation. So let's do that. Okay, I have 2 times, and then my new value for 8 is, or x is 8, minus y equals 23. Okay, so then my first step would be to multiply here, 16 minus y, right? Okay, and I want to isolate y, so I'm going to subtract 16. So my new equation will be negative y equals 23 minus 16 is positive 7. And I want to get rid of that negative over there by my, by my negative y, so I'm going to multiply by negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive, so that leaves me with y equals... Okay, so whatever I do to one side, I must do it to the other. So 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. And there I have found uh, my coordinate point. My x is 8, and my y is negative 7. So if I were to take these two equations, and if I were to graph them, I would see that they intersect at the coordinate point 8, negative 7. Okay? Now, um, just for good measure, let's take this point and plug it into both of these equations to check how it actually works out. All right, so if I have 2 times my x is 8, okay, minus y, which is basically minus uh, negative 7 equals 23. Let's see if this checks out. So this is 16. Minus a negative is the same thing as plus, right? Because if I change these, they both, if I change, if I make this uh, subtraction sign a positive, then I must make this the opposite number of negative 7, which is positive 7. All right, so is this in fact true? 16 plus 7, is that 23? Yes. So that checks out for this equation. All right, let's check, let's check the other equation now. So x is 8 minus 9 equals negative 1. Okay, so there's no y, uh, no y, um, no y coordinate here, so, or y variable, so I didn't need to worry about my negative 7. So 8 minus 9 is, in fact, negative 1. And yes, negative 1 does equal negative 1. That checks. So again, this is the solution to both of these equations. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, same thing. I need to, uh, I need to simplify one of these equations so I can find the value of at least one of the variables. And it could be either this one. I could, I could use this one and solve for y, or I can use the bottom one and solve for x. Uh, I'll go ahead and just solve for x. What the heck? Um, so that would be basically adding 4 to both sides, 4y that is. So that leaves me with x equals 4y plus 19. So that is my value for x. So now I plug in this value over here. So let's plug that in. So 6 times, and that value is right here. So that's what I put in over here in this space. Let me erase that. Whoops, I erased too much. So that's 6 times, and then my value, right, so I put it over here, uh, plus y equals 4. So that value for x is 4y plus 19. Okay, so let's work this out now. So distributive property, right? Okay, I end up with, 6 times 4, it's 24y. And now 6 times 19, uh, let's see here, that's uh, 60, that's 114. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, so I'm going to add like terms. 24y is a like term with positive y. That gives me 25y plus 114 equals 4. My goal is to isolate y by itself, so I need to get rid of 114 by minus. 
Okay, so my new equation is 25y equals negative uh, 110. So I'm almost done. So my next step is to get rid of that 25. So y equals negative 110 over 25. Okay, all right, so now I have a value for y. So this value of y now, I will input to this equation. All right, so let's do that. Do that with a different color, do that with white. So x equals or minus 4 times negative 110 over 25 equals 19. All right, so let's do this. Okay, so uh, let's see here. I have a negative 4 times a negative 110. That's going to be 440 positive over 25 equals 19. Right? So I want to add 440 over 25 plus 440 over 25. All right, so um, the next thing I'm going to do, instead of giving 19 a um, common denominator, I'm just going to break this number down into a, um, a mixed number. So how many times will 25 go into 440? See, 25 goes into 100 four times, and there's four 100, so that's, um, that's what, 4 times 4? That's 16, right? So that's 16, and then there's 40, so that's 17. So 25 goes into 440 17 times, and then I have 15 left over, over 25. And I can further simplify this number. Um, that's 17. And 5 goes into 15 three times, and it goes into 25 five times, plus 19. And all of that equals x. Okay, so I hope you're able to follow that. Um, so what's 19 plus 17? That's 36, right? 36 and 3 fifths equals x. So there are my coordinate points right here. Okay, let me give you a different color. My problem, my solution. So the x is 36 and 3 fifths. And my y is, um, I can also break this down. Uh, 25 goes into 100, what, 4 times, right? And this is a negative. It's 4 times. And then I have, what, 10 left over? over 25 and this will this will um, break down further it's and this is my coordinate point solution for number 17 okay before I continue on I actually need to go back and fix a error I made I don't know if you caught my mistake but let me take you back to that mistake okay I made a common error so here I have negative 4 times negative 110 um, that's actually positive 410, right? So if that's positive 410, that means I needed to subtract 410 over 25. Do you catch that? So that means that was 19. That was 19 minus 19 minus 17, uh, 17 and 3 fifths. Okay, so if that's minus 17 and 3 fifths, then this is actually not... 36 and uh, 3 fifths, it is in fact um, 1, uh, actually 1 and 2 fifths, okay? So that's 1 and 2 fifths. So let me go and correct this over here. So my answer is... one and two fifths, not 36 and three fifths, okay? So again, go back over here and look at my work. Uh, I mistakenly, uh, when I multiplied a negative by a negative, I kept it negative, and it actually is, in fact, negative times negative is a positive, changing uh, changing my problem. So then if you go back and check this solution, that that is actually the solution to these two problems, not the uh, 36 and three fifths. Okay, let's continue on to the next problem. All right, so I'm looking at number 24 now, and I don't have any of my variables isolated, so I'm going to go and have to, I'm going to go ahead and have to do that on my own. 
All right, so I'm looking at number 24, and I noticed that in both of my equations, neither one is has isolated a variable for me. So I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to isolate x on the top one, okay? So uh, that means I'll end up having to add 9 to both sides. And I have a value for x now as um, 5 tenths y plus 9. So then I will take this value for x and plug it into my second equation. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, times 0.5y plus 9. Looks like we're going to have to practice uh, working with um, decimals here. Negative um, 0 0.22 tenths. All right, distributive property, right? So we want to distribute to these two here first. So let's do that. So 2 tenths times uh, 5 tenths y uh, will give us, um, so that's basically this in half, right? So that's 1.1y plus, uh, that's what, 18? Nope, uh, 19, 19.8, right? Okay, so 19.8 minus the rest of our equation. Okay, all right, so now the next thing we want to do is we want to look at this equation here because we want to clean this up. Do I have any like terms? And yes, I do. I have a positive one and one tenths and a negative three and one tenths. So that's gonna come out to be a negative two, right? Negative two y plus 19, eight tenths equals negative two tenths, right? Do You guys see that? Okay. All right, so this is my new equation. So the next thing I want to do, because I'm still trying to clean this up, is I'm going to get rid of my negative 19, 8 tenths. Uh, that would be minus 19 and 8 tenths. Okay, leaving me with uh, this side of the equation, negative 2y with negative 20. All right, so we're getting closer. So I'm going to divide now by negative 2 and y I have a value for y now is 10. All right, getting there. So y equals 10. So I will now take this and plug it into that equation right here, or actually plug it into this equation right here, right? So my value for x is 5 tenths times 10 plus 9. Okay, all right. So uh, 5 tenths times 10, all I got to do is move the decimal over once to the right. That's 5 plus 9, and my value for x is 14. And there we go. I have just now found the solution to both of these equations, which is 14, 10. So if I graph these two solutions, I'm going to notice that they intersect at this coordinate point right here. And this is my answer for number 24. All right, so that does it for the problems I'm going to do for 6.2. I hope this helps, and um, we'll see you in 6.3.